Hi everyone, thanks so much for joining us here today. We are doing our Instagram Live with Jordan Bruce, all about plant-based nutrition and how you can incorporate more plants into your routine. So we are just going to wait until she requests to join and until everyone hops on. It'll just be a couple minutes. We're talking all about plant-based nutrition today. Okay, just give us one sec. Hi. <laughs> How's it Hello. going? Oh, good morning. Well, good morning in on the West Coast. <laughs> Coast. Good afternoon on the East Coast. I love it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So much for joining us here today. I'm so excited for us to be able to have this conversation. I feel like we've been like wanting to chat for a while. So it's so cool that it gets. Yes. Yeah, I'm so excited. I'm excited too. Yeah. So everyone, this is Jordan Bruce. She is a wonderful holistic nutritionist, plant-based, located out of beautiful British Columbia. She specializes in hormone and gut health. And most importantly, what we're focusing on today is plant-based nutrition. So she mainly works with folks that are trying to transition into a more plant-based diet. Um, so yeah, we're going to talk about all about how to incorporate more plants uh, and, and some other juicy things as well. So we only have you for 30 minutes, so we're going to jump right into it, if that's okay with you, Jordan. Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so first off, plant-based there's a lot of a lot of words that are thrown around a lot plant-based vegan how would you define plant-based and also what is your food philosophy as a plant-based nutritionist we'd love to hear it <laughs> okay so there are two different ways that we could answer this question in research like scientific research when we're studying the benefits of eating plants when they say plant-based, they are usually referring to a diet that is majority plants that has limited amount of animal products. They're not usually referring to a 100% plant-based diet. However, out in the community and society, a lot of people who are eating a 100% plant-based diet identify with those words because they may not be vegan and they may not be eliminating all animal products from like their clothing, for example. Okay, so sometimes there is a bit of a difference. I mean, you kind of have to dig into that. But even with that being said, anyone who's trying to focus on eating more plants and limiting animal intake, intake is a win, right? Like we know that there's going to be the health benefits, the benefits for the planet and the animals. Yeah, and, and kind of nice too to not have to, to label it for folks that maybe don't want to label themselves as well. Is, would you say that that's a big, a big reason as well? Yeah. Based. So I feel like food labeling um, can feel restrictive and stressful for some people, but everyone I talk to in the plant-based world doesn't really feel that. And maybe that's because we're doing it for other reasons. Like, for example, maybe it's the animals or there's the, the love of Mother Earth or for health. So we don't really feel like it's a diet. But yeah. for some people like, you know, doing paleo or switching to Whole30, switching to keto, like every month they're trying something different. I could see that label being a little bit restrictive and stressful. Okay, thank you. That makes a lot of sense. Thanks for breaking it down. Yeah. Um, yeah. So when it comes to incorporating more plants into your routine, can you give us some tips on how, on where people can start? Because it can be one of those things where, you know, it can be kind of tough. So if you can give us maybe like three yeah. top tips that folks can use to incorporate more plants into their everyday. Okay, so now that the weather is finally getting nicer on the West Coast, I know it's been hot on the East Coast, but I find smoothies a really easy way. You do not have to be good at cooking. You can literally use up whatever you have in your fridge. So it's like a sustainable move and affordable. And it's easy to get a lot of different veggies and fruit in your smoothie. Just ensure you have protein, fat, and you know your fruit and veg so that it is balanced and your blood sugars are nice and supported for hormones health. But okay. I throw like cauliflower in my smoothie. I throw zucchini in my smoothie. Like you can get creative and just sneak veggies in that you won't even taste. I love and that. So that's an amazing tip. And then also because it's getting warm here and my 
uh, appetite's shifting a little bit with the heat. It was like, feels like 30 yesterday in Vancouver. I've oh. been making snack plates and I'm just like, I'll do some smoked tofu. I'll do some snap peas, some hummus, some raw carrots. So it's a delicious, fun way of getting in veggies. You could throw berries or olives, some dark chocolate. Like it's like the vegan version of a charcuterie plate, essentially. <laughs> well, but yeah, a snack pack for adults. Yeah. <laughs> or for kids. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, my son loved it. <laughs> um, and then if you're wanting something like heartier, another thing you could do is just make a delicious pasta. We don't like a lot of people think pasta is like something that we should avoid or it's not good for our blood sugars and our hormones. I love the the chickpea based pastas for more protein. And then I just throw in a bunch of veg. Like you can throw three cups of spinach and it just disappears. Oh, I love that. Yeah. It's a great way to, and then with the chickpea is chickpea pasta, you said, right? Yeah. High in protein as well, right? Very high. You don't even have to add extra protein to your pasta dish because it's so high in protein already. Oh, so good to know. Okay, so just, yeah. it was really quick. So everyone, we're just gonna kind of like um, go through them again. So number one would be smoothies, um, especially in the warmer weather right now. So including things like cauliflower, things like zucchini that you can't even taste, but it's a great way to sneak them in. Second would be to make some fun kind of vegan uh, plant-based charcuterie boards that you can do that's quite tasty. And number three would ma be making like a, a chickpea pasta or something that you can just throw in some spinach or extra veggies in. That's, so those are some great tips. Thank you. Uh, okay, <laughs> now, talking about protein with the chickpea pasta. So that is a grand, yeah. great for our next question. So I know that Protein is a very, very, you know, big concern for folks that are transitioning to more plant-based diet. Where are you getting your protein from? And I know traditionally it might be a little bit outdated now um, when it comes to more animal products. Um, if you think of like size portions, you could think of, you know, the palm of your hand would be, you know, a piece of whether it be like animal protein or for instance, a, you know, piece of cheese would be a matchstick or what a matchstick box. Um, when it comes to plant-based proteins, can you give us a little breakdown on portion sizes? Like, should it be a cup of chickpeas? Like, is it okay to just do a little bit? Like, maybe if you could just give us a little breakdown so that folks yeah. know that A, getting enough protein, and B, they don't have to, like, overly measure everything. And a complete protein. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, I have so much to say on this. Okay. So, the first thing, <laughs> I guess, this says a lot about how I practice and just how I live my life and how... Um, you can tell I've never, a lot of my clients have come from a place of restricted eating or disordered eating, but I actually haven't. So I have never measured anything in my life. Um, I don't either. The only thing, yeah. So throw that out the window. Don't, we don't need to measure, but we do want to be conscious of how much protein we are getting a hundred percent. So I, to, to be fully transparent, I do not know that they, like, I know what you're talking about, like a, a portion of meat is like a handful. Yeah. I don't know what the equivalent of that would be for plants. Okay. So what I would say is just focus on getting 20 to 30 grams of protein per meal. It's a high goal for some people. So yeah. if it's too challenging for you, or for some reason, your protein needs are lower based on weight or activity levels, then aim for really getting the most protein in your day in the morning because that's going to set up your whole day and your all your energy levels and keep the blood sugars balanced okay. and with respect to complete protein i'm so glad that you brought this up if you are transitioning to eating more plants do not fret about combining amino acids okay. amino acids are the building blocks of protein and our body stores them and this is a myth that has been going around. It was featured in a Vogue magazine, I think like in the seventies or something. And wow. it's a full on myth. There is, you do not need to combine a two, like rice and beans at one meal. You just need to have variety in your protein sources over a few days. And the body just does it all. The body's so smart. So I even learned about combining complete proteins in nutrition school about five or six years ago. So it yeah. just shows how sometimes things kind of just sneak their way in there. 
So I love lentils. They're so high in protein and iron. They're so easy to add to things. I love smoked tofu. I love tempeh and quinoa, chia seeds, hemp seeds, even peanut butter. Like there's so many good sources that if you want to transition, do not let protein be, be the concern. Okay, that's great. Thank you so much for breaking that down. And, and thank you also for breaking down what amino acids are and why, why they are important. So that's interesting. Thank you so much. Um, so this all transitions into another question. Um, as a plant-based holistic nutritionist, we want to know what are your thoughts on things like tofu that are often vilified, especially when it comes to hormonal health or with men eating tofu? And what are your thoughts on meat alternatives such as Beyond Meat? and things like that. If you could give us, give us the, give us a, a whole thing about that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you are a hundred percent right. For some reason, tofu really does get a bad rep and it is very unnecessary. Um, tofu is absolutely, or just soy, organic soy is, or non-GMO soy is actually amazing. Um, a lot of the concern with soy is actually with respect to the animals because we're growing a bunch and we're feeding them the non the GMO soy. So that is all going to the animals and then the humans are consuming non-GMO and organic soy. With respect to hormones, it's super interesting. Um, in Japan, there are lower incidences of menopause and hot flash sim like symptoms because of consumption of tofu and tempeh and edamame. So tofu is, is contains phytoestrogens, plant estrogens, and we know that they're a thousand times weaker than estrogen. So for example, beer is also a phytoestrogen. And a lot of men I know that are worried about tofu are drinking beer. Not so worried. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there are tons of benefits. It's high in magnesium. It's often calcium fortified, fat, good fats, iron, um, high protein. So I absolutely love tofu and tempeh and edamame. And I don't think that you need to be concerned. Obviously tune into your body. It is one of the top uh, allergen foods like wheat and corn and all that stuff. So just tune in and make sure it feels good for you. Um, and Fermented is always a, a, the better option, which would be tempeh. Okay. And um, then, Jordan, I just wanted to ask, yeah. if it's accessible to folks, would you always recommend uh, organic and like, organic tofu? Yeah, if possible, I would. Okay. Um, for tofu, it's very easy to find organic and very reasonable, a lot cheaper than meat. Yeah. And for smoked tofu, if you're in Western Canada, it's becoming a little bit more of a challenge. Um, one of Sunrise Foods, who's really well known in Vancouver, uh, they switched to non-GMO smoked tofu only. Okay. There's a new company called Ume, O-O-M-E. It's delicious. Ume? They have a Greek, a Greek one, a maple one, and a smoked one. Really good. Oh. A little bit higher price point, but it's just a brand new uh, female-founded company. So it's, it's really small, unlike Sunrise Foods, which is a huge operation. But okay, cool. yes, if you can, go for organic, for sure. Okay, great. That's awesome. And what are your thoughts on and Beyond? And respect to the Beyond. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> this is a... I may get surprised. People might be surprised by this. So I am totally fine with the occasional processed food, the occasional beyond. We don't want this stuff being a staple of our diet. We want to reach for whole foods the majority of the time, 80, 20, 90, 10, whatever that looks like for you. But occasionally I'll throw beyond into some pasta or my dad is obsessed with the sausages. So whenever on vacation, we have those sausages. So if it's once in a while and you enjoy it, that's totally fine. And it also depends on the reason that you're eating plants. If it's for sustainability, like for the planet or for the animals, that person may consume those foods a little bit more than someone who's switching for health reasons. Mm -hmm. And also, just because someone's plant-based doesn't mean that they don't get to have some 
processed food here and there. Because if we look at someone who's eating like an omnivore or, you know, fish centered diet, I'm sure they're having some chips and some processed food too. <laughs> yeah. So it's okay within moderation, like with anything that's more of like more processed, like everything in moderation. Yeah. Okay. I, 100%. Yeah. Okay. I like that. I like that. It's not overly restrictive and it's realistic. So you heard it's that. Just, it's all about enjoying food uh, while getting a, as many nutrients as you can, but with no stress. I love that. Okay. Yeah. So next, I want to talk about deficiencies. So as, a, along with protein, mm -hmm. this is a huge concern I find in practice or just in general when people are transitioning to a more plant-based um, plant-based diet would be deficiencies. So what would be, like, give us a little breakdown. I know you've talked about this on your page, and I find it very, very fascinating. Um, Omega-3s, B12, mm -hmm. how are folks getting enough of it? How can they make sure they're not deficient? Give us a little breakdown of this. I know you said really, really good question. Yeah, yeah, very good question. And very important for anyone who is considering uh, including more plants in their diet. Yeah. So for B12, anyone who is 100% plant-based or very, you know, 90% uh, plant-based, definitely take B12. The only reason people who are meat eaters are getting B12 is because the animal is injected with B12. Prior animals were grazing, they were getting it from the soil. Okay. Now we have to inject the animal. So they're still kind of supplementing, but it's through the animal and we're just taking it directly. As of depleted soil, is that? Yeah, because we're no longer grazing. Okay. The majority of people are buying, like, um, unfortunately, like the concentrated animal feeding operation, like from the grocery store. If you are seeking out different meat, which is definitely going to be a very small percent of the, of the population due to high cost and just resources and accessibility, then that may be different. But for the majority of the meat that's at the grocery store, um, they've got their B12 shot. So we're just taking it as well. You could take B12 or you could even consider uh, a B complex if that benefits you. Okay. Uh, I love a B complex for, for stress and, and nervous system. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, so good. And for energy. Um, with respect to omegas, that's a really good question as well. And something that some omnivores may need to consider as well, depending on how frequently they're consuming omega-3 fish. Yeah. So there's two options here. Uh, one is consuming ALA-rich foods. So that's going to be the hemp seeds, the chia, the flax, the walnuts, and the body is going to convert some of that into the omega-3s. Research okay. doesn't really know how much is being converted. And it's also going to be different based on genetics and if your ancestors were eating a lot of fish or not. Okay. So to cover you off, I like to recommend keeping an algae oil, which is high in DHA and EPA in okay. the fridge and just kind of supplementing when you remember. It's kind of my method of, of doing it. Uh, I probably should take it more often because sometimes I forget. But mm -hmm. I always recommend, even for people who are eating um, meat, if they want to take an omega-3 supplement, I always recommend going with the algae oil because the only reason fish are high in EHA and DPA is because they eat algae in the ocean. So why not just go right to the source? It's grown offshore, so we have less contaminants, yeah. and we're not depleting our fish stock. Amazing. I love seaweed. It's such a wonderful plant and can be so incredibly medicinal, and it's easy to yeah. grow. I love that. So... We just mentioned and just talked to some people that just uh, joined us right now. We are talking about deficiencies and how to get enough. So B12, if you can supplement, um, that is yeah. ideal. And also with uh, omegas, you can get it from an algae supplement or from things like flax and chia, which is essentially ALA, which is alpha lin alpha, li 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 <laughs> alpha. Linne linne it's so hard to say. Linne <laughs> <laughs> That's converted. So just making sure that, that you are covered, taking an algae uh, omega-3 uh, supplement is pretty ideal. Is that about and with respect, what we that's, yeah, that's perfect. And I'll just add in with respect to iron, 
there has been research that says that people who are eating a plant-based diet are not more at risk of being iron deficient, which is really fascinating. So I think a lot of that comes back down to our gut and our gut health and our ability to absorb iron and break down food. Um, if your period, it, your menstrual cycle is very heavy, that is another thing to look at. Um, why is it so heavy? You're losing lots of iron through blood loss. Yeah. And then just a note with respect to deficiencies, I actually, um, I think I shared it yesterday, knowing we were going to have this talk, shared an old reel I did. And the, the green screen of the Instagram reel was a research study, and it compared deficiencies in plant-based people and omnivores compared to what they're high in. And it was just mm. so interesting to me because, you know, the plant-based people were low in things and they were high in, in certain things. And then the, the omnivores had the opposite. Uh. So it just shows that just because we're living a plant-based diet or eating a plant-based diet um, doesn't mean that omnivores aren't low in certain things too. Like, fiber or ALA, ALA, folate, uh, calcium, and then everyone that doesn't get enough sun is going to need vitamin D. Amazing. Thank you so much for breaking that down. And for anyone that wants to check out Jordan's page, tons of amazing information on this. Um, mm -hmm. Go check it out. Um, okay, next, I really want to talk about this because I personally got this a lot. Um, and I know a lot of my clients and, and folks in general get this. A lot of people tend to get bloated and gassy when they consume a lot of more beans and legumes. Can you give us a breakdown on tips on how to avoid this? And is there possibly a root cause that we could be looking at first? Um, if you want to kind of just break that down for us. Yeah, that's a really, really great question. And I'm sure it pertains to a lot of people. So I will say if you are considering increasing your, your plant-based intake, do switch slowly. Your gut bugs are literally going to change and shift based on the food you're eating, which is so interesting and cool. So I would start with like a tablespoon a day and just slowly build. If you just go from really not consuming beans to including a cup daily in your meals, you're probably going to feel the blow. Yeah. And Another tip to make it easier is actually buying the beans in bulk and cooking them yourself. You could even add the seaweed, like kombu, and that really helps break down um, the, those starches that are a little bit harder to, to, to absorb. And it's actually a, a good thing because it's feeding our, our gut bugs and it, it's uncomfortable at times. So I guess the key with bloating is if it's a little bit of bloating and it passes and it's not painful, that's probably normal, like cabbage yeah. and broccoli and certain foods are known to do that. Yeah. If it's painful and you're always bloated or like you look pregnant, that's where we need to dig deeper and figure out why. And that could be an imbalance in the gut. So it could be something from small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, known as SIBO, or it could be a deficiency in commensal bacteria, which is the, the good microbiota. It could even be an overgrowth of opportunistic bacteria, which we would support with um, some herbs. It could be parasites, and we want to eradicate those. So it, it really depends on the severity Okay. And how long it's been going on. One of my clients actually just ordered, um, I, I think you have heard of it, the GI map stool test. Yeah. 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 I'm obsessed. I love it so much. So she okay. is uh, vegan and she has been having a very hard time with lentils and beans. And she's kind of at a loss and a bit frustrated because it's a, it's a nice add in when you're plant based. So she just ordered, we have a call later today and we're going to order her, her stool test and that's going to reveal her bacteria levels, anything fungal, parasitic, all that. I love that. So just a little uh, recap, if you're getting a lot of bloating around with um, beans and, and uh, lentils and legumes and things like that, start low and slow, um, not all at once. Um, instead of just buying canned beans, if you can soak your beans and then cook them in a little bit of seaweed kombu, 
But if it's incredibly, you know, painful and uncomfortable and you're getting like, you know, very intense bloating, then, then that's when you would dig a little bit deeper. Thank you so much, Jordan. That's great. Um, we like I have a one more thing to say. I yeah, yeah. have a little add-in that I forget. Also, um, to be fully transparent, I do not cook beans from scratch the majority of the time. Uh, I cool. would like to, and I think it's beneficial to, but just to be fully transparent. So when I am buying canned beans, I aim to buy um, the Eden brand mm. because I watched a documentary on the cooking of beans and it was just so fascinating. And pretty much every brand would just shoot a bunch of hot steam into the can and cover it. And that was the oh. cooking. That was it. So it's no wonder why we're feeling the, the bloat. So Eden is actually cooking their beans. They're adding the kombu into the can and it's organic and BPA free. And one of my oh. clients, that was the only switch she did and her bloating went away. Amazing. So Eden Foods, we will, if we can, we'll add that to the show for folks to take a look at. I personally love that brand as well. Um, we only have a little bit of time left and I really want to ask you these last yeah. questions. Yeah, so, go for it. I know. Okay. So if you can give us a breakdown of three easy but nourishing plant-based meals for busy people. Don't skip the details to some extent. Um, if you can give us three for busy people that just want a quick meal. Go. Okay. So I would say Buddha bowls. They're hands down one of my favorites. Pre-make your grain if you like, um, like rice or quinoa or lentils. Have it in the fridge ready to go roast some veggies and then add some fresh herbs and raw veg. So have a mix of the two. I love roasting yams or you could do carrots. You could shred some beets. Those are so easy to get a bunch of veggies in, add your protein. Delicious. A good tahini, lemon, garlic drizzle. Mm. Um, so <laughs> second thing I'm really into lately is the um it's a sandwich and i make it a uh, chickpea flour omelet have you seen those it's just like chickpea oh, flour with yes. water and yeah it's so good just add in some turmeric add in some you know i put in black salt and smoked paprika in a bowl and then i just throw it on the pan and i kind of flip it into four so it's all folded over and then I add it to my sandwich with like almost half an avocado. I, I add smoked tofu to bring up the protein a bit. And then the bread is like 12 grams of protein right there. Wow. Delicious. So are full through. Protein, fat, and fiber. You all the yeah. You've got your oh, yeah. fat and fiber. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So good for hormones. And then you're getting a ton of different produce, like plant-based items. Um, so the goal is... 30 plants a week and that includes herbs so this sandwich probably has like six right there amazing and then lastly i'm also in the summer i just love the i think it might be minimalist baker but i've been making it for so many years that i just don't even look at the recipe anymore um it's her um kale caesar I'm trying to remember mm -hmm. so it's with roasted chickpeas and I just throw on, you know, smoked paprika again, cumin, turmeric. You roast those up. You roast the garlic. And that goes into the tahini lemon drizzle sauce. And then you massage. At least you're going to want to do two to three heads of kale. Just okay. massage the kale with some lemon or oil. Get it all nice and soft. And then you add the chickpeas in the sauce. Last time I threw in some uh, roasted cherry tomatoes to kind of bring some more color and life to it. And it's so good. And this salad will last two or three days because it's made with oh, kale. I love it. So it won't wilt at all. So you can keep it in the fridge. It friend. will not wilt. I always have it for leftovers. I swear it tastes better the next day. It's so good. I love that. Okay. So <laughs> food bowls that you can pre-make your, you leave your raw veg and your roasted veg. You can do a really nice po protein packed sandwich with chickpea flour um, kind of crepe thing that we will try to link. Um, and then lastly, we've got a really delicious kale Caesar that you can make that will last up to three days in the fridge. So you can pre-make it and then have it. Um, those are yes. great. And I think the chickpea omelet, I think it's on my website. I think there's cool. um, a blog with the recipe, I think. Amazing. Okay, one last question. I know we're running out of time. Yeah, it's all good. 
What's your favorite kitchen tool? What can you not live without? <laughs> oh, this is so hard. I feel like I want to pick three things. Okay, I'm going to tell you what they are. There's three things I love so much. One is the blender. I have a Vitamix. I love it. I, I wish they would make them in glass, though, because not only is the plastic staining, it, I don't like putting hot things in it because of endocrine disruptors. So I'm very mindful of that. Uh, and I would, they have a stainless steel option now, but you can't see what's inside when you're blending. So blender, one. Okay. Two would be my, I'm sure I think of the brand, the Breville hot chocolate maker, but it's Ooh. a milk frother essentially. So it's a milk frother, okay. but I guess they kind of uh, market it towards like making hot chocolate and it just froths. My, I use soy milk, high protein, organic soy milk, no, no sweeteners. And like, I just had this matcha. It probably had like 10 grams of protein in it. Um, yeah. It's so good. So every morning I have matcha and I love that, that frother. And then the third thing would be like my matcha whisk and my matcha bowl, because I just, when I'm traveling without it, I'm like, Oh, I got to like shake it or something. Like it just, I just love the morning whisk. It's not the same. I love that. Okay. So your matcha whisk, cause you love your matcha, your Breville frother, which sounds so nice. Cause I'm sure you can make some really nice hot chocolates as well. Um, and then lastly, your blender, because, you know, we all need a really good quality blender. Yeah. So that's awesome. Thank you so much for coming with us or coming and chatting with us today, Jordan. It was such a pleasure chatting with you. Can you please just tell our community how they can connect with you? Yes, of course. So my website is really easy. It's jordanbruce.ca. And my Instagram is Jordan, well, you'll see it here, but it's jordanbruce.wellness. If you have any questions, um, shoot me an email from my website or just shoot me a DM on Instagram. And yeah, I hope you guys learned a lot and incorporate more plants into your life. I love it. Thank you so much again. And we look forward to having you on maybe in the future. Okay. And one more thing I thought yeah. of. If you are dealing with bloat, because I know you love herbs too. Yep. Introduce chamomile, mint, or fennel tea into your day. It really okay. helps with bloating. We're herb lovers here. I love it. Cold or hot? <laughs> oh, I do hot, but what do you like? I like either or. It depends on what it is. If it's peppermint, I really like cold. So it kind of, it, it depends on my mood. But I'm definitely a hot beverage kind of gal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nice. Thank you so much, Gordon. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Okay. Have a good day. Bye everyone.